this this thing off? Um, sure. Why not? Um, so hi, welcome. What was the title? <laughs> yeah, Paranormal 101. We're going to talk about Paranormal 101 today, Aha. and um, essentially, unlike uh, yesterday, we did more of a, a tech-based um, uh, talk, because that's really my, more of my forte. I, I, I always say, kind of stick with your forte, and I'm as sensitive as a rock, so I don't personally... Uh, delve into that side. I stick basic, you know, primarily just on the tech side. So uh, our talk yesterday was primarily tech, and today we're going to more take a a higher level approach as to what we do on investigations on on both sides. Um, uh, we've got four awesome panelists here today, and I strongly urge questions. I don't know about you guys, oh, but I love questions because. I'm flying by the seat of my pants anyway, so I love questions, and it, it, it just kind of helps, uh, um, you know, answer your questions. You know, we might have our own direction, but uh, your questions is really what's most important. So, I myself, my name is Sean Porter. I'm the owner of Ghost Stop. We make, uh, manufacture, design, and sell ghost hunting equipment. So, if anybody's seen like shows like uh, Ghost Hunters, anybody seen Ghost Hunters? Ghost Hunters Sorry. International. Mm -hmm. Ghost Adventures, so on and so forth. Uh, there's tons of shows out there. Um, if you've seen any of them, you've seen some of the equipment that we've developed. Uh, we prime, we pretty much, um, we supply almost all the shows, and uh, it's it's a lot of fun. But not only that, it has grown into supplying teams all over the world. Uh, funny thing is, right now our biggest, um, aside from the United States. Uh, the biggest country that's out there investigating right now is Australia. There are uh, teams growing in Australia like they did here eight years ago. You know, they're just booming over there, and it's awesome. So I'm going there next year. Yeah. Uh, to see what's going on down there. Down under. Ha. Huh. Look and see what I did there. Okay. Uh, so, again, my name is Sean Porter. Um, not only do I own Ghost Stop, but I've been working with the TAPS team, which is the team that is on Ghost Hunters, for 10 years probably. Um, been good buddies and working with them behind the scenes for a very long time. And I just happen to, uh, even though I'm kind of in the background, I'm usually I'm on the other side of a phone or a text, uh, I got the opportunity to get thrown into an investigation uh, last season and, um, you know, Basically, I was, what I do is I bring in new equipment. We concept new stuff, bring in new stuff, and when I got there, Jason said, hey, you going on the investigation night? Okay, sure, I'm here anyway, might as well. It's either did that or sit in a hotel room. Of course I would want to go ahead and, uh, why not, right? But I've always been in the background anyway, and it was a great opportunity to, um, I guess, I always say this face is not made for TV, but um, it was great to, to be on there. So that's me, uh, David. I'm David Byers. I'm one half of uh, Timeless Paranormal with my wife Shannon. Uh, we're a local Georgia uh, investigation team. Um, what you describe? You, you want me to yeah, take you over? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm the talker in the family. I'm Shannon. I'm the other half of Timeless Paranormal. I'm also known as the paranormal genealogist. My specialty is uh, historical research, debunking haunted fake lore on locations that are shown on TV because most of the history that they give you on the big name places is completely wrong. So that's what I do is I write up and uh, lecture on what they tell you and what the true facts are because to me it's more important to know the real history because you, you can't go into a location asking irrelevant EVP questions and expect to get an answer. So we we have personally been together investigating and married uh, for 12 years. Which is harder? Investigating or being married? <laughs> <laughs> we, share we share our brain. brain. So <laughs> <laughs> there it is. <laughs> um, we we both got interested in the paranormal as young people and you know when we met you know we we've been investigating since long before tv came along uh so that's who we are well, my name is john mccoy i like long walks on the beach <laughs> <laughs> um, 
um, I've been involved with the paranormal since a very young age. I, uh, after my my grandfather died, every other kid would be like, "Well, I don't know what to do. He's gone. I I don't know how to feel." I thought he thought he was still alive because he was staring at me in my bedroom. Mm -hmm. I'm going, um, "Why are you here? You're supposed to be in heaven. What's going on here?" So that fascinated me. So I picked up my first book at age of six. And I, and I started doing investigations. I was using a little Polaroid camera and one of those analog voice recorders you can stick a tape in and hit record. And I, I was just doing the cemetery investigations and just paranormal investigating just come natural to me. It was, it was just something that I was just innately good at, at at a very young age. And I'm, I'm 20, 26 now, or 26 years old now, so, so round about I've got about 20 years experience within the paranormal. And right now, I'm case manager of the Canadian Paranormal Society out of British Columbia. I live down in Florida, pretty much neighbors with Sean over there. And uh, I've done investigations with some of, with some of the biggest names in the paranormal field. And, and I've also got a radio show. It's kind of on the back burner right now. And I've also been published in the Spectral Times out of Great, Great Britain. So that's who we are in a nutshell, I suppose. So, we've already covered that. So, do you believe in ghosts? Do you believe in, in the paranormal? Yeah. How many believe in ghosts? I'm just curious, how many believe in aliens? Okay. How right. many hardcore skeptics we got? I want to believe. <laughs> I mean, yeah, how many are yeah really on that skeptical side? Like you know something's there, but I want you need proof, right? I want to see it. Who doesn't believe at all? Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't be here. <laughs> oh, you'd be surprised. Oh, really? <laughs> so, out of everyone here, how many of you have actually been on an investigation? One, two, three, four. <laughs> if given the opportunity, would you actually want? Just, just a couple. Just a few. If given given the opportunity, would you actually consider going on that investigation, yeah. or possibly forming your own team, or or joining a team? Well, uh, I got news for you. You're in the in the right now. <laughs> Types of ghosts. Sean. Oh, I can't see that over there. There's a whole lot of types of ghosts. <laughs> Next. <laughs> <laughs> this little fuzzy here is the only real orb ever. Yes. Orbs, yes. Orbs. If you see an orb with your naked eye, you're good. Uh, if your can camera you see this sees one it. With your naked eye? If your can camera sees it, you don't. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's dust, it's moisture. We can probably have her come up right here with her fancy little good camera and stand right here and and take a picture and she can catch an orb. Mm -hmm. and an orb is dust, water, moisture, particles in the air, the reflection of a bug. If, if you're in, in a prison or something, you got little middle shit shavings in the air because that's just how things are inside a prison. The only time I would ever, ever, ever consider an orb to be evidence is if I can use it in, in conjunction with an, an, an EVP, video evidence, or something concrete like that. Personal experience and camera and video and it has to be used all, 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 all together. Stuff like mist is also very iffy because that can be smoke, the, your, the, the heat from, from your breath in a cold environment, so on and so forth. Shadows. Well, shadows. I'm, I'm, Everybody's out there going, shadows, shadows. Um, people say that there are such things as shadow people. I, myself, am not 100% convinced they exist. Um, my version of a shadow person is a dearly departed that hasn't been able to fully manifest. Um, there's lots of theories on what shadow people are, what they mean, what they do, why they're black. I've personally never seen one. I have seen an apparition that could not manifest fully. Some people put a lot of negative connotations on shadow people and think because they show up, there's something inherently evil there. Um, 
we are not of that belief. Okay, then you've got the partial apparitions and the full body apparitions, which to me partial would fall in the shadow person category. Just a little more shape to it. It takes so much energy for them to be able to manifest that you're going to get them in different stages. I mean, you're going to get them anywhere from a black, <coughs> black or white mist, a black or white shadow, a see-through person, or like they're sitting right here and you think you could touch them. It, it, all depends on how much energy they've got. It doesn't, that doesn't denote what type they are. It just means how much energy they've got. So Sean, what, what would you say a poltergeist is? <clears throat> poltergeist, I mean, poltergeist is, look, I'm, this is the skeptic side of the table. Uh, so, you know, there's a, a lot of cases where, I mean, personally, I've been in where there has been, you know, claims of poltergeist type activity when when we say poltergeist that means things like slamming doors uh, things physically moving things getting thrown uh, of that nature I haven't experienced that yet myself um, I can't attest to what that that might be personally I mean if you read a book you get theories all over the place you know but for me I haven't experienced that yet but that's what it means is you know something that has enough energy to physically move something, physically touch somebody, you know, scratch somebody, things of that nature. Along the lines of that also, <coughs> and going into the demonic aspect, um, we've always had the feeling of, you know, you can think something's evil, you can think something's demonic, and a lot of times it's just somebody that's grumpy. a bad person, a grumpy person. Our belief is if your personality in life has the personality of death. If you were mean, evil, and vicious when you were alive, you're going to stay that way. If you're bratty, we run into bratty ones that just, you know, had that You don't attitude. know anything till you've met a 16 year old who died in 1847 of the measles and was not happy. <laughs> she could put the mean girls to shame. We've, we've had some interesting interactions. And then there, there's levels of what they consider demonic activity. We do believe. There are demons. We don't believe there's one in every chair in here. We don't believe there's one in every house. We believe they are very rare. Like he said, it's more just because you've got, you wake up and you've got three scratches on you, to us that's not demonic. You know, when a ghost tries to get your attention, they're like a two year old. They will do anything to try to do it. So if they've decided they're going to scratch you, is your shirt. When you are, dude, if you're with somebody, hold your fingers up. And on their arm, or, or put your hand up actually, on their arm, run your, your hand down like you were trying to get their attention. These three fingers are the only ones that touch. That doesn't mean you're demonic. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things they keep trying to tell you on TV. You know, there's a demon around every corner. Demons are serious business. <coughs> and Personally, you know, if we ran a case, across a case where we thought that was going on, we would be calling other, other people in. I have taken demonology courses to be able to look at the signs of the person who may be affected, and I'm fully aware that I'm not equipped to be able to handle that kind of thing. <coughs> so we'll, you know, recommend things for them to do and then turn them over to someone, you know, because I know we can't take care of it. The, the thing about a, a demon is it was never part of, the, of this world and it was never intended to be a, a part of this world. And 99% of what we captured in the paranormal can be debunked, disproven, recreated the full nine yards, which leaves only about 0.99% of what we capture that's actual usable evidence. Now, you have that, that, that little 0.01% that can potentially be demonic. It's just something that, does, that just doesn't happen very often. Now, you don't got to be a Christian to believe in demons. You don't got to be a pagan to believe in demons. Or it's, it's whatever else. A demon is just, just, just horrible energy. It's just something that, 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 that just gets inside of you. And a, a good example of this is I was doing an investigation in Sanford, Florida at the Shiloh Cemetery. I don't know if Sean has been out before. Oh, yeah. Um, we, we actually come, come across a site in the back 
where some Luciferian Satanists actually sacrificed a goat back there, and just you walk in this place and you go, I gotta get the hell out of here. This is not cool. And uh, we ended up having to call, <coughs> call the cops and have them clean up the the whole mess. And for about six months after that, my life just went down the tube. <laughs> so yeah. So things things just happen beyond our control. And if you actually feel like you are encountering a demonic spirit, don't come to us. <laughs> go to go to your clergy members. Go to the paranormal clergy. Go to go 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 to demonologists because they're the ones who, who who specialize in this. We're the ones who want to play with the, 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 the nice kids. So <laughs> we we try to help whoever we can with whatever they're experiencing. You know, you know, people call us and say this is what's going on. We're going to go in. We're going to do everything we can. If we can't handle it, we will help you find somebody that. You have to. If you're going to investigate, you have to know your limits, and you have to be willing to tell your client. You know. Put your ego aside. No, I'm sorry, I can't help you. You need to contact these people. Because it's not a bad thing if you don't want to deal with, you know, if you get in and start doing the client interview and it makes you uncomfortable and you don't want to deal with it, that's that's nothing on you. And that's actually a good thing for the client because you're going to put them in better hands. Did you have a question? Yeah, um, you all had ordered guys up there as a negative energy. If they touch you, is there a poltergeist or no? Poltergeists are usually more aggressive, and they okay, they like uh, no. poltergeists would literally just throw something. They they, they, the they tend to be destructive yeah. and chaotic. Did they did I hate to think that Emily was was angry about something? No, yeah, Pol poltergeists. You know, well, my belief, poltergeists are, are nothing but really bad, violent energy. They don't do human interaction whatsoever you know you'll come in and you'll find things thrown around a little like your house has been broken into that type you of might thing get but they don't fire, do anything to you and yeah unless you're getting a line of fire of one of their temper tantrums yeah think of a poltergeist like a domestic violence case that's pretty much what it can and sometimes if they're not even actual spirits they're just <laughs> a buildup of negative energy yeah that's why you see a lot of times it's teenage kids that are going through puberty that are putting off so much energy that energy doesn't really have anywhere to go and it turns around and feeds back on the teenager that's why poltergeist activity usually only lasts between three and five years at the most now who here knows what an, an, an EVP is you in the back can you can you give us an example of a question <coughs> for an EVP electronic voice uh, is captured So if it's like spot on. if Shannon here was 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 a spirit and you, and you wanted to make contact with her, what would you ask her? We're gonna play interaction. You don't know. Sometimes just not these questions. Sometimes you don't even directly attempt to say, "Hey, are you are you listening?" Overlapping a conversation, you're having someone else kind of like they're interrupting. Yeah, some of the best no, EVPs. No, you're not right. I like tomatoes. Um, yep, yeah. some of the best like EVPs that. we've ever gotten have been while we're just carrying on a normal conversation yeah, and they're they chiming they in. They seem to react. That these are my friends. It's more. They like to interrupt um, whatever you're talking about, and if you try to say hello, they're like. See, it's like I told you, it's like they're a two-year-old. They want to put their two cents worth in. Well, it's like one of the things that I really enjoy doing is is taking my, my audio recorder and placing it inside of a room and walking out. Because if if someone was, was, was private in life, they're more than likely going to be private in death as well. So just leaving it there, you, you're, you're going you're gonna to pick up what, what, what's going, going on in the room. So if, so if they're too too shy to come out and say hi, you just will be you, 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 you excuse me you leave it there and they'll 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 carry it out their normal <coughs> routine. And, and they they tend to go through mood changes. We have places that we investigate multiple times because we've gotten used to the thing and they've been interacting with us. But it's an open to the public kind of building, and if there's been crowds there that they didn't like the people, 
they won't talk to you. They sort of just stay away. They'll let you know they're there, but they're not talking to you. Okay, who knows what EMF is? Jeff, give me a definition of EMF. It's electromagnetic. All right. Are there two different kinds of EMF? Yes. Audio, what are they? Audio and audio. No, EMF. Oh. Put me on the spot here, girl. You've got natural and man-made. Yeah. Every person in here emits their own EMF. If you were to take a meter and put it somewhere around you, you would get 0 0.1, 0 0.2. If you're so. reading a natural EMF meter, not all meters read natural EMF. Um, Typically, trifold meters where you gotta go for that. Well, our, our, our uh, yeah. whatchamacallit reads me. Um, and then you have man made, which is like, anything that plugs in. Um, if it plugs in and runs off electricity, <coughs> it puts off EMF. Some things put off way more EMF than others. Um, and if you'll bear with me just a minute, because this, this is one of my, my babies to talk about. Um, too much EMF and long-term exposure to EMF can be very dangerous for you. And I'm sorry if it's a repeat for what you already hear. Um, long-term exposure to EMF has, is now being linked to Cushing syndrome, adrenal tumor, tumors, breast cancer. It causes things like rashes, um, ringing in your ears, nausea, hallucinations, sleepwalking. migraines, sleepwalking. The list of what the effects of an EMF are is this long. I'm one of those that's affected. You know, when we go do research and I go to the archive room and they've got all the microfilm machines and everything in there, within five minutes I'm in the bathroom trying not to throw up because it affects me like that. A lot of times what happens is somebody will call us and say, and I'm sure you've, you've seen this on the internet too, I'm laying in my bed and I'm seeing shadows in the corner of the wall, or I feel like somebody's watching me, or every time I lay down, I feel sick, or that, you know, interchange bed with, with any other part of the house. And the very first thing we do when we walk in that client's home is check what's next to their bed. We had one case where we checked the alarm clock. The alarm clock was thrown off a 60 milligauss, not 0.6, 60. By the time we moved the meter to their pillow, it was still emanating at a 30. I told them, move your alarm clock. Well, guess what? As soon as they moved the alarm clock, all that stopped. And if you've got multiple items and it gets worse and worse with more and more technology and electricity stuff we use but more things get shielded but if you've got multiple things in a room that are throwing off high emf fields in different locations it will create what's called a fear cage and you're being bombarded and it's like you're getting hit from every direction and it can make you very sick it's different than other night i'm, I'm sleeping what you do? you're I'm, sleeping yeah so it's, it's the same i wanted to watch <coughs> Night Rider, but they made me go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that alone is disturbing. Uh, <laughs> like the Hoff, what can I say? <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't hassle the Hoff. <laughs> right. So if, so, he, if he's yeah. hearing, if he's hearing the voices, uh, go ahead and give the EVP report to him. Go ahead and, and walk on over there. <coughs> you are going to be, 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 be conducting an, an EVP with him as the trigger object. Since the events are happening to him, why not, right? Sure, why not? So the lights are out. You're 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 doing you're a thing. In bed. You hit record. What do you ask? Do I talk? It's not on. Just, it's not on. Just ask. Yeah, just in, in general. Just in general. Yeah, yeah, how would you yeah. start talking if you were doing? We're giving and you those hands off. Yeah, I have no idea. Would, would, wouldn't I just want to listen, or do I need to initiate a, a conversation? That's, you need to initiate a conversation. So, like, my name is so and so. I'm yeah, I guess I would. I guess I would. I, I guess I'd be polite and introduce myself. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, don't, you don't go in there. You know, you used to, used to see some of them that are very provoking. A lot of times that's, yeah. that's dangerous, it's not good, it's, and it's not respectful. Because yeah, yeah, it sounds dangerous. He's a 12 year old child, you, you, you don't want to cause something bad to, to happen in his room, right. and that's going to digitally 
harm. Right. Yeah, so I, I mean, I guess I would, I would introduce myself and then I would ask, like, who, who, who's there or is this? Okay, so, so go ahead and kick, kick off the EVP session. Just ask a couple of questions. Just like so you're really doing it. Do it like you're really doing it. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. Live at Home of Hello, my, my name is Dan and I, I'm. Hi, Dan. Oh. Hi. <laughs> you're asleep, right? Oh, I'm asleep. You're, you're a trigger. You're a trigger. I'm watching Night Rider. Right <laughs> I wanted to watch. <laughs> Are you I'm David Hasselhoff? <laughs> so it's 3 a.m. and then you hear on the window. You have a camera. I know, so I'm, I move over to the camera. Well, and then, and then I wake up and go, <laughs> that's it, that's it. That's what I hear every Tuesday, Thursday night at 3 a.m. So there, there, the there's the camera. The door's the window. The door's the window. So I would definitely move the camera to the window to see what's knocking. Well, aren't what you curious as to what make, well, yeah. make, 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 make the sound? So you're going to go over there go over to the window and see if there's there. something there. inside. And see what's inside. So <laughs> on <laughs> your EVP recorder, you would say, Mark, there is, well, Mark as in. Like as a time marker. Mark, right. right. Um, time. Right. Your you, you time stamp going. Uh, a, a, a strange knock, whatever else. That, that way, when you, when you are reviewing the evidence, you can actually write down what time it happened. And in, in your editing software, you can you can clip that one part and leave it here. What, what's going on? That's one thing when you're doing EVP sessions. If you make a noise, if you move, if you sneeze, cough, fart, yeah. <laughs> your tummy rumbles because you're hungry and you're ready for a Waffle House, you know, you notate it. You notate it. Yeah. You, or you don't have to write it down. You can just say that was me Obviously. sneezing, that was me whatever, because <laughs> you're not necessarily the only person that reviews that recording. Right. And you would not believe what bodily noises sound like on a recording. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like the next week. You're like the next week and all stuff. <laughs> what the world was that? <laughs> oh my God, there was a demon and we didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> so, and if you also got, if you just have to say something during the EVP session that has nothing to do with right. the EVP session, my butt is just <laughs> say it loudly don't so you don't whisper, whisper. it. <laughs> okay. So Never I whisper. What did you say? Do I see kids outside the window now? You could, yes, <laughs> you could. So, tree, so, so you go outside and hey, there's a woodpecker out there. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, but you're also getting wet from the sprinkler system if you went outside. Could be that right. too. Right. Uh, so Another good thing is with children, if they're having issues sleeping and stuff like that. And find out their routine at night. Right. Yeah. Overstimulation like, from TV. I go ahead and oh, yeah. sugar the magical, at night. Yeah, that, the, the, that's, the that's where I was going to go. No, because we're bad. Right, then I had to talk to the thing. So your, your, your next plan. Yeah, but he's too scared to go check it out outside. That's, that's actually uh, funny. <laughs> you know, well, you know, we don't let him watch Knight Rider, and then we turn around and watch the sprinklers. You know, watch um, the sprinklers. You might be surprised by the number of cases that that we have had. Uh, 3 a.m. reports, you know, on on a certain night, and it's because the sprinkler system goes off. <laughs> so one of the first things I do now is go into the garage, check the sprinkler schedule, and see if it's on 3 a.m. Wow. <laughs> Air conditioning kicks on at a certain time. That again, uh, that that falls back to your client is telling you something specific is happening on a certain day at a certain time in a certain room. That's when you want to be at their house, right? All right. So it's the following night. You have another client call. He uh, he is in bed. He he hears his closet door open, and then he feels something pressing down on him to where he cannot move and he cannot speak. Okay. Take away. So um, this is happening every night. Yeah, pretty much every night. And is there a specific time that it's happening? Yeah, about one in the morning. One in the morning. And um, is there anybody else in the room with you at that time? <coughs> Not just my wife. Your wife. And is, 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 does she aware of it too? She, she tells me she's not. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> is it your wife? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, is she aware of it too? She's never said anything about it. Have you? Oh, okay. So she's not awake when this is happening at all and she doesn't. I sleep like a rock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
um, okay. And is there anything in the closet that would um, make it fall open or close? Like, is there balls, like, you know, basketballs or anything? You have, like, sports equipment in there or no, like that? just gloves. Clothes? Clothes. Oh, clothes. <laughs> like, now we've got a whole new thing. <laughs> clothes. So um, as you're observing his room, uh, observing the room and uh, observing his bed, uh -huh. you see a CPAP machine on the floor on, on his side, uh -huh. and on his nightstand, he has <coughs> medications. Okay. So what are the medications for? Uh, sleep apnea. Sleep apnea. Okay. And, um... Restless legs. Sorry? Restless legs. <laughs> right. Yep. Yeah. I am familiar, with, um, yeah, I'm familiar with that. Um, okay, and are you having? Is the machine like um, still working properly right now, or yeah, are you it's been acting up? It's been acting up. Some nights it works, some nights it doesn't. Okay. So, well, that's good. And um, and exactly, what does the medication do for you besides like open up your airways or? It helps my legs relax. Helps you relax. Okay. Um, so wouldn't I take my EMF then and like look at the Native. machine? So if you actually look at the medication, if, okay. if he allows you to do so, right. nothing that he is taking can give him like kind of delusion. I was thinking about that for hallucinations. Moment. Right. Okay. So if you can can either prove or or disprove prove, 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 prove that, then you then you take take the investigation to the next step to find out what is actually going on. Okay. So it is one a.m. Mm -hmm. Everyone is out of the house. Right. You're you're doing an an isolation in in his room, and you decide to lay on the bed mm -hmm. <laughs> and see if you can recreate or experience what, what he is experiencing. Experience. That that gear in your hand is whatever you want it to be. So what 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 do you think is what would you option? use from that list that we had of stuff? Well, I would definitely see. Um, I would use the EMF to see if that it was, it was coming off the machine that's might be malfunctioning, right. especially if there's he's having hard times and he feels pressure. Having a hard time breathing would cause pressure. So, like to me, I would first thing I would think is this is the machine because I know that they and need to be renewed every once in a while because a friend of mine has one. So I just happen to know that. <laughs> um, so that I would use the EMF and see if there was like like too much stuff coming off of that. Machine. And what if it only read a two? Um, then I would have to have. Well, how would you check the machine? Because really. Sure. Right? Just, 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 just. Oh right! Oh, turn it on the machine. Well, the, yeah, the machine would have to be on. And on right, and I would check it and have that. I would have probably have the machine running mm -hmm. while I was sleeping, so that if I hear it like making a noise or something, then I can check it right away and see if it was that that would rock the EMS would freeze up. Turn it on, let it run for the period of time that he's been asleep. Right, I would have to on as soon as he goes to sleep because after. see if it has an issue where it gets too hot, it shuts off. Right, right, right. Makes yeah. him stop breathing. Yeah. So as you're laying there, mm -hmm. you notice his closet door just mm -hmm. unlatches and and opens. But at the same time, one of the other investigators who who's doing an an, an email soup or whatever right. in the living room steps a certain way and that door opens. What what would he do? So there okay, so he steps a certain way and the door opens. So yeah, there's right. something about the foundation going on. That makes it tilt a little bit enough for it to open up, or like moves it enough, or vibrationally wise, something with the foundation is not sound, so they do cause the door. The settling of a house to do right. it too. If it's been hot all day and the house cools, yep. things will expand and contract. <coughs> but if you have heavy animals purpose. that decide they're going to hit that spot in the right. middle of the night, like a large dog leg like, laying down, boom. Yep. And okay. All right. So this is, so this concludes <coughs> your your investigation. What are your minds? Um, so, well, definitely it's, it's a foundational problem with the closet door. So, um, I don't know, you would have to have some car, uh, construction person come in and, and figure that piece out. And I would definitely go to your doctor and do another sleep test and get your sheet machine updated. And what are, are your findings? On your case. On your case. Change your sprinkler schedule. <laughs> 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 they watch Night Rider. They let him watch Night Rider. Yeah. Okay. And you're fine. Just to let them know what's going on. Okay. Have them check the wiring in the switch for the microwave or the microwave itself. You know, there may be an electrical issue. Whole wiring will, will really mess with meters because they're not shielded in a lot of older houses. And if you've got that pushing out, sometimes you can just have a switch replaced. You may Something may not be grounded properly. Yep. 
Alright, Judge, what is your final <coughs> deep dimension? You mind the, the judge? Yes. The client. Uh, the or am I still the little boy? <laughs> <laughs> I watched Knight Rider. You have grown up now and you can watch Knight Rider whenever um, you want. <laughs> that was great. That that was that was that was perfect. That was spot on. Um, you know, as 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 you guys know, I mean, you know, most of the time on investigation you can and will find logical solutions to to what the activity is being claimed by the client. Does that necessarily mean that the sprinkler uh, is the cause of every everything that they have going on? Well, not necessarily. They're, they could still be experiencing something paranormal, but what you found is logical solutions to uh, what they're experiencing and very well could be. Um, and you can uh, adjust the, the that, eliminate that, if right. it's still happening afterwards. Yeah. And you know, you right. Know, you we'll come back in and we'll so see what you're if we doing can find is, anything else. What no. you're doing is you're making the, the client now cognizant, cognizant of those things when, when things happen in the future. So that was brilliant. Thank you, yeah. and that helps a lot. Thank you. Have you ever had a situation where you told the client to change his break points from 3 to 5 a.m.? And then all of a sudden they start calling you up and saying, you know, it's the darnest thing, at 5 a.m. I keep hearing this knocking on my door. <laughs> or out of my window. We'll, we'll make recommendations to clients if we find things that are wrong, you know, electrical leaks, moving the alarm box, certain things like that. And then, you know. You'd be we'll, amazed at the ones that don't listen. Yeah, they don't listen. And they call back or we hear they've contacted another organization that we know. Want to post. Yeah. Yeah. Some people do. I mean, for me, generally, it's kind of an aha moment for, for a client when they go, oh, I didn't even think about that. But, you know, there, there, there are a small uh, group of people that, you know, they just, they want to believe that it's Uncle Bob, you know, and they, they want to believe it's their family member. And, um, you know, you can't take that from them. And you have some that just because of the shows they watch and all that stuff. They they want to live in a haunted house. They want to have teams come in and investigate. And it's cool to have ghost hunters it's, you know, come to cool your house. Ghost hunters come to your house. And you know, a good ghost hunting, any proper investigating team, well, they're not gonna charge you anyway. They're gonna come in to help you out. So you're getting that. And, um, they like it and they'll bounce around. They won't listen to the one group. They'll call another group and see if they get the answer they want. Is there any other questions for us? Yes. What is a boo buddy? <laughs> we'll leave out with a song. Man, again, I could talk about boo buddy all day. But um, boo buddy is essentially, and I don't have him with me. We had him yesterday in our talk, but boo buddy is a bear. It's a stuffed bear that actually does an investigation for us. He uses a lot of the tools that you know you guys were using up here. You know, a lot of the tools that you would use on an investigation from EMF, you know, motion detection, detects uh, the axes if it's been touched, um, and responds to those. So it actually speaks. It asks the questions. The, the questions that she was answering on the investigation, Boo Buddy's doing that in a little child's voice. It's a teddy ruxpin that goes and it's, on. And it, acts, oh. it can act as a trigger object. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and then what it'll do is if the environment does change, like say it's just sitting in the middle of the room, and uh, an EMS spike occurs, it's going to respond. It's going to say, you know, uh, um, thanks for touching. You know, thanks. For, uh, I like holding hands with you. Uh, it'll say, "Can you do that again?" It'll it'll actually respond to to temperature. It'll say, "Brr, it's cold in here." Yeah. So, Boo Buddy is actually like it's more for the, kids, right? You, well, the, and a lot of investigators are using this. is a brand new tool for us, so it's been about a year, and it's become amazingly popular. I couldn't be happier because I we it's my baby. Boo Buddy is my baby. I love it. You know, this piece of equipment is so sensitive. I was uh, working with. Brian, Brian Jake at Kit Kennel from Haunted Book Collector in, in, in Ocala. And I just scraped my foot on the floor, and the vibration was enough to set off the boo buddy. So this thing, you can blow on it, and it's, it's going, to, going to, to pick up a reading. It's phenomenal. Now, if, if you want to see it in action, just go to ghoststuff.com. Um, <laughs> but you'll also see him on Ghost Hunters. Uh, not sure what other shows yet, but they all have them. So uh, I, I know he'll be on Ghost Hunters here really soon, if not this week. Cool. Yeah, you can find us on, on, all, on, on all these sites. And, yeah. Uh, question. Yeah. Uh, 
question. Going back to when you said you went to Shiloh Cemetery. Yes. When you guys do investigation, how worried are you about spirits latching on? And what do you do to prevent that from happening? Do can, I, can I address that real sure. quick? That's actually why we created Boo Buddy. Because I... <laughs> you don't do it. You don't do it. <laughs> but there's a reason for it. And like I said, it's a culmination of my experience as an investigator. Because whenever I go into a place, uh, activity stops. There's something about me. I don't know what it is. You know, psychics will tell me there's some sort of barrier around me. Blah, blah, blah. All that. I don't know why that is. But when I go into a room, activity stops. So nothing attaches to me. So I haven't had that experience. But that's why we created the bear, so that I could send something into the room without me being there. Okay? So I haven't had that attachment experience. We've had clients that have. Um, but, uh, you know, when, when it does happen, are you going to address that? Oh, I have had things follow me home, and we've, you know, we've got cleansing rituals that we follow that based on our beliefs. You know, we, we do the saging and, and that kind of Prayers thing. Prayers get protection. There. Certain items are I carry like certain stones. stones. To, I, when we're at a client, the last thing I say is, "You are not allowed to come home with me." <laughs> um, some of them listen, some don't. And you know, we if if we if that happens, then we just have to take care of it. We learn to recognize the signs if it happens. Um, actually, sure. Uh, leave me your email address, and I will will send it to send it to you. And answer your 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 your, your, your question as well. This might sound a little cocky, but it's not meant to be. When I go on to a, a location, I'm not so worried about what can happen in a paranormal aspect. I'm more worried about the personal s s safety, physically of, of myself and my crew, which is really important to go through proper uh, pre-investigation methods because. You want to you want to, you want to do do a walkthrough first. Oh, yeah. You want to see is there run down parts of the building if you're doing a commercial building. There are are the stairs really weird in this person's house and you step wrong and you're going to end up on your on your face on the floor stuff stuff like that. But when it comes to the paranormal, I'm not worried about something lat, lat, latching onto me as much because I I've, I've de de dealt with it be before. I've been I've been investigating since I was a kid. So it's not something that really alarms me, but if, but if something was to latch onto me, I've got people that I can, can contact to help me, me, me fight it off. I've also got, got stuff that I do for myself to protect myself before going on to a location. And, and if you go to do investigations just because you see a rundown bed and you think it might be haunted, don't trespass. Yeah. You're, you'll trust me. And it doesn't matter. There does not have to be a no trespassing sign. Still trespassing. That, it, that property, there's no unowned property in the in America anymore. Somebody owns it, whether it's the state or private industries. And, and they will lock do not you up. <coughs> They've even sold you know, parts of the moon and Mars. Mm -hmm. so just be careful. And you, you can be arrested. Yeah. So I learned the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> If, if, if you really want to do a, a location just for the, the sake of going and doing it, make sure you got written permission. Make sure you notify the local police department as to what you, you were doing. <laughs> yep. Someone drives by and a flashlight goes by a window and they see three people in there. First thing, click, is, right. it, is, it's, 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 it's a burglary. But if you call ahead and the cops go, no, that's, that, that's just so-and-so doing an, an investigation, you're, you're safe and with sorry. what what got me in trouble is because I didn't do that I just showed up to an old church great great going it's old it's run down no one's here great <laughs> you so. can find out within 30 seconds who owns a piece of property because every county has now got an online uh, property tax yeah, database yeah. All you got to do is go to that county, put in the address, and it'll immediately tell you who owns it. And a lot of people, if you if you ask nicely and you say this is what I'm doing, some people, most people will give you permission. They're like, just don't hurt anything. Yeah, luckily and for if you're trying to break into some old rundown places, it's not only dangerous because of the cops; it's dangerous because for it's you. rundown for a reason. Luckily you for, for 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 me, the the, the 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 property owner knew knew who I was. And, Thank you, everybody, for coming. We really appreciate it.
it pegged out the millimeter. Most rooms you go into when you do baseline readings, you'll catch 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3. That's typical. When you get into numbers like 20, 30, 100, 200, you're talking about a lot of energy being pushed into a room. Yeah. What number, what reading becomes unsafe? Constant exposure wise, they've not nailed down a set number, but if, if you're in an area where you're bombarded at 50 for long periods of time, you're going to feel it. I don't like seeing in a room where you're sitting at a constant over a 10. Because, I mean, it, it, is, it causes real long term medical issues that. That's you, why you find so much things. You go to the now. doctor and the doctor can't figure out what's wrong with you. I have a weird question. If it takes a lot of energy for spirits to manifest, couldn't they feed off the EMF energy and manifest better? That was going to be my next point. Oh, when you, oh no, no, I'm glad you brought it up. It's a very good lead in. That's the, the house that he was just talking about um, had lots of, activity. lots of activity. And what they were doing was feeding off all the EMF that was being emitted in the house. And yes, they were seeing full body apparitions as opposed to just something out of the corner of their eye things were being you know heavy things were being moved so yes they that they can pull off that energy but on top of their spirit activity they were having they were also starting to have lots of nauseas and migraines and they were actually having both effects the end of that is, is feeding off the energy do you investigate during the daytime too with the lights on? Oh, we, so. we will investigate. It doesn't matter what time. We've we've have gotten just as much interaction at ten o'clock in the morning as we have at eleven, twelve o'clock at night. Why do you think that TV shows like Ghost Hunters? Is it because of the it's a TV show? Theatrics. Or is it because of the IR, which Grant told me last year? Well, basically, you've got less environmental contamination at night when you're going to a location. The traffic may be less than it is during the daytime so the audio you can better rely on the audio you got you know of course shooting an IR you can't do during the daytime but that's a nighttime thing but ghosts are 24 7. But yeah. so, I was gonna say it's a combination of things for us and in our shop we have our shop is in St. Cloud just outside of Orlando and we're we're in an old bank that's over a hundred years old we got footsteps. We've got a gentleman in our, in our, well, we say gentleman because everybody thinks it's a guy that looks like me that walks around the shop and everybody thinks it's me and it's not. Um, uh, doppelganger. I got a, a doppelganger, I guess, yeah. Um, but they call him Harold. I haven't, I'm the only one that hasn't seen him in our shop and he runs around our shop all day long. I have people seeing him and making noises and and all kinds of stuff. It happens all the time, but to answer your question about the shows, there's there are various reasons for it. And one of the reasons we moved to where we did is because we were in Orlando before. You know, big city, Orlando, lots of noise and all that. It's very hard to investigate, you know, or, or, you know, in our shop or around our shop when you got all kinds of activity going on outside, you know. So now we moved to St. Cloud, real small, quiet little town. We could go to anywhere around our shop, you know, at night, and we pretty much have the keys to a lot of buildings, and investigate, and there's nobody outside. There's nobody giving us contamination, but, um, and, and doing it beyond that, doing it in the dark gives you the opportunity to control the light a lot more. So if you've got, you know, uh, sunlight coming in from outside and, and you catch a shadow on your camera, You've got a lot more to try and dissect uh, than you would if you were in the dark and you only had one IR on your camera. Done. You've got one source to worry about. So it makes it easier in that regard, regard and of course it makes it spookier too. And you, can use, you can use multiple spectrums of light besides just IR. You can use IR, visual, full spectrum. You get broader choices on, on, on what you can look at because things show up at different wavelengths of energy they'll visualize a different way with some light, even ones we can't see with those eyes. One of the most important things, though, is what your client tells you. If your client tells you that something is going on in their house every Tuesday at, you know, 11, 15 in the morning, that's when you want to be in their house, not on Saturday at 2.30 in the morning. 
So it's always important to take what your clients are telling you is going on and just your investigation around that. You had a question? Uh, back to the EMS, um, is there some sort of shield that can manufacture for uh, certain things? Um, yeah, there's something called, a, the, the word for it is a Faraday pouch or a Faraday cage. I think she's um, asking about normal everyday electronics. So. Stuff. Yeah, that too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think my day job is is in a radio electrical field and they do make things that can shield it and newer technology is being shielded more and more because of that kind of issue so but uh, a lot of the older stuff you, you know you can find things to block it but sometimes the patch is more expensive than replacement yeah. sorry Sean no 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 worries yeah. you got it I mean you, you can there are ways to shield or just find the source of the, of you know whatever spitting out EMF and then kill it. I mean, we had a we had a case. Um, she was talking about the the, the EMF. Uh, this was many years ago, but there was a child on the case, and we went into into her room and you know kind of looked around, and we found one of those little power surge strips that were right under her, the head of her bed. It's just sitting right there and it was spitting out a couple hundred emf just constant so imagine your head's like sleeping right next to that on a regular basis um, you know that that can cause a whole lot of things um, that could have caused the whole list of of activity that she was experiencing um, so yeah there's a lot of things but um, you know to segue into to your point about the about the light i think that's the next point anyway is that the um, infrared oh you moved on there yeah, we're, we're just, we're going to get in, okay. in the gear. Yeah, so since but, you run, don't start one spearhead the gear point? The what, what? The gear. The gear. Sure. The CMOS, yeah. Uh, what do we got up there first? I mean, Mel meter, I mean, it's a type of EMF meter. The cool thing about the Mel meter is it's kind of a, it's kind of a tool for many trades. Uh, the Mel meter was developed by a guy named Gary Galka, a good buddy of mine. And he's constantly, it started off as an EMF meter that also does temperature and now it's got proximity sensors and light sensors. It's a Cadillac with a whole bunch of uh, um, things that you can, uh, environmental sensing equipment that you can add and you know, just keep going. So the Mel meter is a great all-in-one tool that does a whole lot of things. Um, REM pod is, but the Mel meter again is just one of many types of EMF meters. Um, I'm sure you've seen them on most of the shows. It's a little little box that's got a digital display on the top. Um, a K2 is another type of EMF meter, and the little you know digital scales. There's all kinds of different ones, but the Mel meter is probably one of the, uh, for me, one of the more go-to tools for that. And then there's my holy grail, the tricycle. That, that's my bucket list. I yeah, I always I, have a yeah. I always right. have a tri-field natural. Tri-field natural. There's a lot of different yeah. tri-fields out there too. Try most tri-fields are read man-made EM, uh, EMF and natural EMF, so you were able to. <laughs> they're, they're not cheap, but they're a good tool. They've actually gotten more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. REMPOD is, a, is, is kind of the next one that's on the list, but again, it's pretty much another version of, of a Mel meter that, that, that detects more proximity. It's got an antenna on it. You've probably seen it on, they use it a lot on Ghost Adventures. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Because you see that one a lot. And that's the one where it's got a little antenna and it, it does a whole lot of beeping and stuff when, mm -hmm. when something comes close. So you All can put your lights. hand, you don't even have to touch it, you put your hand next to it. And what it's detecting is, is you know energy signatures and the way the energy bounces back to it um, with you know again with everything you've got to take it with a grain of salt because this thing is also <coughs> going to go off for various reasons like uh, radio signals you know if, you, if, your, if your team has you know got walkies and you're talking back to each other you know a, a, a nice little you know radio hit is going to send that thing off the charts too so so uh, uh, cell phones, yeah, some cell phones. They Mine does it. They mess with K2s more than yeah. Right. Yeah. K2 is very susceptible to cell phones. So, um, I guess the, uh, the the point of all this is the right tool for the job, and you got to know what it's detecting. Uh, 
Um, and just because you see it on TV and buy it. Doesn't mean you know how to use it. Learn how to use yeah. it properly. Just a lot of, we see a lot of people that buy a nice piece of gear and go out there and it's like, hey, I'm getting readings. And they've got it set wrong and they're picking up something that's not even there. You know, you know what your equipment does. You know, a, a, a beeping REM pod doesn't always mean Harold is there. Yeah. Um, I mean, cameras, yeah, still cameras up there. I, I'm a video guy. Uh, I, I love video. And a lot of people have, you know, and use still cameras on an investigation. Um, but if you're going to go get, uh, if you want to get yourself a still camera for an investigation, again, there's lots of different kinds. But you might as well get a video camera at this point. Because just about every video camera has still capabilities. And to me, one of my points for that is that, it, you know, they, as the old saying goes, you know, pictures worth a thousand words. Imagine 30 pictures per second. I mean, you know, 30 uh, videos, 30 frames per second. So you're getting a whole lot of information from a video camera than you would a still. Um, but if you are going to use a still, take take a whole bunch of shots if you can. But I like a video camera. I mean, I could talk all day because that's more my forte is is photography and video. I could talk all day on to which camera to use, you know, whether to use infrared, full spectrum, that uh, you know, what type of lighting to work <coughs> to use. Um, I just want to make a quick point though that because you get a camera and it says night vision on it doesn't mean it's going to stay in the dark. Uh, because you get a camera that says full spectrum um, doesn't mean it's going to stay in the dark. You've got again right tool for the job. You have to have lighting. You have to have proper lighting for, for a camera. Just like your eyes. Our eyes work based on light. If we shut the lights off in this, in this room we won't be able to see anything. Same thing goes for a camera. The difference is, is that a camera can see, if it's modified it properly, a camera can see invisible light. Infrared is invisible light. Ultraviolet, to a certain extent, is invisible light. There, there's a lot of, man, I could go into this forever, so yes. I'll stop now, but uh, <laughs> the spectrum of light is vast. So if, you wanna, if you're not sure what kind of camera to get, Hit me up or hit up GoStop.com and we'll, <laughs> we'll help you figure that out because that is a long conversation. And, and when you get your cameras, learn your cameras. I'm a photographer and, you know, people wonder why they get this reaction in a camera. And, you know, I, you, when I use a camera for still photography, I carry an SLR camera with a very fast, mm -hmm. low light lens, but I use a flash. But unlike pop-up flashes on some little handheld cameras, it's a full-powered bright flash that washes everything out at night. So you're just like, if you got a shadow, that flash may eliminate it. I use a flash that I can reduce the power so it illuminates but doesn't overpower the entire room. And typically, always take your photos in threes. Three shots, three shots, three shots. That way you can see if something shows up in more than one or nothing something nothing you like okay then you can question what that is <coughs> you also want to make sure you have have a flashlight with you if you're tramps around the dark you kind of mm -hmm. don't want them to fall down and hurt yourself and kind of ruin the whole point of going on on investigation you can have all this gear you want uh the next slide is also some really advanced gear but you can spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on gear but if you don't know how to use it you don't know how to read it, it's useless. You are the most important piece of gear. Now before you, you go out and buy a FLIR, EVP recorder, night vision camera, whatever, they're going to go into dis... dis <laughs> uh, uh, yes, we are. This one. But if you pull out your phone and you throw that on airplane mode, you got a camera on it, you have, you have an, audio, an audio recorder on it, so you can theoretically do an investigation with your camera alone or with, with your phone alone. I've caught them some really good evidence on just my phone. They don't agree with me, but that it, it is a method that I use to I, do as well. I'll agree with you if it's just the phone you're using. If, you and, have if you're else. using no other kind of gear, like a K2, if you're using a K2 and using your phone even in airplane mode, it can interfere. If you're using just what you're using, a recorder and a camera on your phone for EVPs and some visual, I've got no problem with that. If you want to go play in the cemetery, by all means use your phone. If you're doing a legitimate investigation in somebody's house and you've got other equipment, um, he works in the RF shielding field and all of his clients are cell phone companies. So he knows exactly what is gonna set this phone off. 
putting it in airplane mode doesn't do crap. It still receives stuff. When we do an investigation, everybody that is at that place is required to completely power down. It's they funny how many people don't know how to turn their phone off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. We'll spend 10 minutes teaching people how to cut their phone off. Um, but, you know, it is okay in some instances, but when you're using other equipment, there, this, and it doesn't matter whether it's an iPhone or whatever else is out there. Because I, I mean, we can literally okay, talk there. Yeah. 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 I mean, if I mean, you think something's thing, going on and you want to cut on your recorder and start right. asking questions, that's fine. Yeah. Here, here's, here's a couple to me. A phone is, um, uh, 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 sometimes it can be a little frustrating, you know, on a real investigation, you see somebody using a phone just because there are there are a lot of things that can interact with it. But there's also a whole lot of computing power and processing power in, in a phone that we very near in the future are starting to, to utilize. If you're using the phone in a right way, you know, with the, the, the and, um, you know with the right hardware and capabilities, it can be very, very powerful. Because um, again, there's there's a lot of power in there that we could be harnessing. The thing is that, you know, it could be used for reporting, um, uh, you know, if, if you're doing, to me personally, I wouldn't do a lot of audio recording uh, on a phone because, again, there are things going on in the phone. There are processes happening that could interact with that. Um, but, but you know. new flare attachment would be pretty cool. I haven't That's actually seen one there, work. There, there uh, I have one. one. You got one with you? got one in the car, has, yeah. It, it connects right to, to, yeah. to the yeah. phone like a case. And it's right. Again, that's one of those yes. things yeah. I can't afford. Yeah, one of those things that, that, that take a bit. Isn't that a lot more energy that you're just feeding it off to them? Like Depends what? on the piece of equipment. Most, most of the equipment we use for reading, like the REM pods and stuff like that, they're designed for something very specific. You can sit a REM pod down, it's generating a small field, and it's not going to affect... Uh, like a millimeter, you might get a slight reading, but you know what it is, so you know where that part's at. And a lot of it's shielded to to be protected yeah. against certain certain things. Yeah, that 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 again is just learning what tools are going to enter, interact with others. You know, a phone a phone uh, uh, and a K two not a good mix. You know, a phone and a REM pod not a no good problem. mix, but a phone and a millimeter, yeah. no problem yeah. at all. Uh, and still camera and stuff like that. Doesn't that use more power? Or yeah, cats. most most video cameras, most still cameras don't radiate unless you got it like plugged in. Some of the power supplies on computers and cameras like that, if you get close to them, the, the little box, the DC box, it, it'll radiate a little bit of energy. But within a, a foot, it's going to Yeah, it's real small. EM pumps can mess with some uh, some meters if had depending on how close you get to them. And they're used to generate energy for spirits to feed off of. Uh, but they're usually a localized area, and you, you test it against your other pieces of equipment so you know how it reacts and it doesn't happen on an investigation. That's what part about learning your equipment. It's like the mail meters with the rim pod attachment. If you've got it set real sensitive and your hand's too high, your finger moves, it'll set it off. And you're carrying around and it goes off and you think you've run into something and it's yourself. It's your finger. Because <laughs> you can get the fields of most of them rim pods to expand out to different levels. Usually if you keep it tight, that way they come to it to, to do the interruption. It's the best way. We're going to move on to the next slide real quick, and this is where things are going to get a little fun. But to close the, this one out, you got a whole kinds of, of other gear that they, they can use with Boo Buddy, grid, later, grid, grid, grid lasers, a DVR set, set system. So whatever you want to do with with your gear, just go to GoStop.com, talk with Sean. He can... He can hook you up. So, how to investigate and how to conduct interviews. Who here has zero experience at investigating? All right, I need three volunteers to come up here. Um, hey, come on. First three. Come on. And let's get one guy. One guy. <laughs> Any guy volunteer? Come on up. Come on down to the restaurant here. <laughs> you, you right, we're going to send you to the spirit world. Are you ready? <laughs> All right. How many of you have actually heard of live, live actual role play? Okay. Us three here are your clients. You guys are the criminal investigators. He is the judge. 
Mr. Bob Baker. All right. This is my phone, but this is going to be your EMF meter. Us three are 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 your clients, and you are going to, going to ask us what is what is going on in our our house. What would you ask us? Is anybody here? No, you. We're no, your clients. no, we're not. This ain't client for interview. Clients. We've called you. We got something going on in our house. What would you ask us to try um, to determine what it is? Are you seeing things? Yeah, are you seeing um, like any kind of? Uh, a person standing there, or it looks like a person standing there, or shadows. I see them in my kitchen. Only in the kitchen? Only in the kitchen. And is there a specific time that you see them? No. So it could be at any time? It's happened at day and okay. during the day and at night. Is there anybody else in the room with you when you see them? There have been other people in the room, but they didn't see it. But they don't see Only do you see it? Right. Is there anything on in the kitchen while you're, when you see it? Like, are you doing something specific when you're... When you're no. Nothing. It, so it you can, can be, be sitting having coffee or you can be cooking and it just happens at any time and you're the only one that sees it. Correct. We could be microwaving something over here at our our microwave and just get 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 that really nasty feeling that that someone's watching us and if we turn to to too quickly then we actually see something move out of the corner of our eye. But it, it always happens at that one spot. Where the microwave is. Yeah. So at that point what am I like to see if there's So you, with the, the EMF meter, how would you find out what it is, or how would you go about making your EMF meter? Very high in the cabinet. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a microwave I ever use because I can't so reach it. So if an EMF meter is, is going to get you a reading, how would you find that out? Well, it's not on the phone. It just use that as the first step. <laughs> yeah, just spot. Just do a spot check. What what she is what she is doing right now is she is getting a, is she is getting a baseline. So if, if she's walking around and says, oh, it's point one, uh, over here, it, it, it's, it's a point two or point three, nothing, nothing too fancy. She gets over here, holy Jesus, it is a, it is a 25, 200, whatever, right? There could be a, a outlet up here that is putting out this high EMF reading, which could explain why, why we're seeing things, why we are feeling things. Right. So let's switch to the bedroom. Our son Sean over here, he 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 is having some <laughs> nightmares, and he wakes up and he, he is hearing voices. What would you ask him? Uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm hearing banging at night. No, I'm not sure what. Does it happen like, every night or? Yeah. Every night. Every night without fail. Well. It's like Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Yeah. 